use all manner of templates to uh, create different effects on our bird. And eventually you have a whole collection which you can store up in a little baggie like I did there. Uh, we're going to illustrate the use of uh, something like this, which is basically a French curve. Uh, we'll use templates that uh, block out or represent uh, a feather such as, such as this to block a feather off, or we'll use one in the reverse, for instance, to lighten an edge in that manner. Uh, a few more tricks that we'll show you along the way. Let's, uh, let's show you what this looks like or how it works. I cut these templates generally out of something like construction paper. Um, I don't want the paint to, when it hits, to, to flow or to bounce off. What I want to do is illustrate the shadowing of this feather. Now, generally, I look at the, the, the lower half of the feather as darker than, than the top half. In this particular case, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the feather in two. In other words, I'm going to have this is the high side to the low side from the high side to the low side. I can take this French curve and I can lay it right along that quill, just like that. Got a little bit of water in my brush. I want to clear that out. And water's left over from, from cleaning it. Now it's starting, the color's starting to come. All right, now I'm going to lay that in right along that quill. Bring up the contrast. In the area right next to the quill. What we want to do is bring this from light to dark and then again from light to dark further down the line. So we'll take our template, lay it along the lower half of the feather to protect the one down below it, and darken this feather along its lower half. So now we've created this bump and roll. And you can see with the, with the French curve, you can about match any shape. It's not going to do everything you ever wanted to do, but it, uh, it'll, it'll match many different sizes of feathers and cover a lot of ground for you. On the other hand, there are feathers where it just doesn't apply. Here, as if for instance, you can you can cover one feather up. This doesn't, a template like this doesn't have to fit the feather. It only has to fit one side or the other of the feather. You, know, you can move it around on the feather to, to uh, protect the area that you need to protect. So let's we can take as a for instance and cover up this side of this feather. Now I come from the template into the base of that scapular feather and just darken its base. And I'm darkening down the center, but I'm concentrating on the lower half of the feather. Create more of a shadow that way, more of the rounded effect. Now, at the same time, I need to clean up the other side of that, make the line a little bit hard where it meets the other feather. So I just slide that over there and do that. Now, I can move with this template, I can move all along the back of this bird so I can cover this scapular feather while I finish painting this top tertial. Again, I go just along the, the quill. And then down here along its bottom edge. I can move right up the line. Darkening as I go. 
And what happens is that wherever I lay this template down and block out a feather, you'll never lose that line. Once you've established a hard line, it won't go away. Even if I shade over that, the separation of those feathers is established. Now here's a feather that lays right there. And I've got that scapular to shade in. As I go forward, I make these darker and darker. We have a few more feathers here we can darken these centers in shading down into the where the, where the back rolls together back here and then to transition into this area we'll pick up a different kind of template an outside template and we come down here and go from these darks to Shaded edges. And that completes the transition through the area. Now, all of this, this entire area needs to be washed, split, tipped, highlighted, and worked with. The airbrush gave us the, the basic pattern, um, the, the blending, but we need to clean all that up. With the airbrush, we, we created a nice soft blend from the dark to the light and gave roundness and shape to this. But I'd like to power this up a little bit. In other words, where this light area is in here, I'd like to brighten it against that dark and perhaps add to the dark at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet, dampen the area that's dark and place the light in there. That, that water along that edge will keep that from drying into a line. And then I can just take a damp brush and bring that to the water. That'll brighten that highlight. I can at the same time take the dark when this is dry, lay the dark along this edge having dampened the center, and work back and forth. Clean that up, brighten it up, and make it more powerful, more dynamic. What I'm going to do here is, just to give you a feel, is to brighten up some of these edges, put some splits in this, do a, clean, clean a little bit of this up so you can uh, get the feel for your airbrush work. Again, you could take hours in this process. What we're going to do here is just give you the illustration of what needs done. <laughs> 